And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Zalmoxies, which was a request from PaleoMike716 via our Patreon and Discord. We did technically talk about Zalmoxies back in episode 400 because it was one of the many hot seg dinosaurs. But when I was looking through my notes, I realized, oh, I could go a lot deeper. <laughs> you just scratched the surface. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so Zalmoxies was a rhabdodontid ornithopod that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Romania in the hot seg basin. And rhabdodontids were ornithopods that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Europe when Europe was a chain of islands. Zalmoxis looked like a typical ornithopod, kind of like a guanodon, but smaller. It walked on two legs. It had long arms, a long tail, and elongated skull. And the head was large and triangular, and there was a beak. It was herbivorous, and it may have eaten tough plants like horsetails and ferns. There's two species of Zalmoxis, Zalmoxis robustus and Zalmoxis shipororum. The type species is Zalmoxis robustus. Now, Zelmoxy's subadults have been found on Hotseg Island, and they range from 6.6 to 7.9 feet, or 2 to 2.4 meters long. Doesn't sound that robust. <laughs> Zelmoxy's shipororum was stockier and larger than robustus, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> There's one Zelmoxy's shipororum that was found, a subadult that was found that was 8.2 feet or 2.5 meters long. Only a little bit bigger then. Yep. There is one juvenile Zalmoxis found that's nine and a half feet or 2.9 meters long, though. Interesting. Yes. Especially because it's a hot seg dinosaur, so it has been thought to be a dwarf dinosaur, but not everybody agrees with this. Twist. Mm hmm. In 2009, Zoltan Siski and others questioned whether the hot seg dinosaurs were really dwarf dinosaurs. And they did histology on the long bones of Zalmoxis specimens. They found 13 growth marks or lags in a Zalmoxis robustus and seven lags in a Zalmoxis shipororum. So they said they weren't juveniles. And lags again, that's like the minimum age. So one was at least 13 years and one was at least seven years. Mm -hmm. However, they also found that the specimens were still actively growing when they died. So we haven't yet found a fully grown Zalmoxis. Hmm. They found that Zalmoxis had a slow growth rate. In 2012, Attila Osi and others described a rhabdodontid, the oldest known one by 15 million years that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Hungary. They assigned it to Maclodon verosi, and they did histology on it and compared it to Zalmoxis. And this specimen of Maclodon helps show that Zalmoxis was not a dwarf dinosaur. They found that the ancestral rhabdodontid had femur lengths of 298 to 339 millimeters, and that's close in size to the femur of Zalmoxis, which ranged from 320 to 333 millimeters. Or about a foot. Mm hmm <laughs> <laughs> Both Maclodon and Zalmoxis lived on islands. However, Maclodon was even smaller. There are Maclodon specimens that are about 3.9 to 5.9 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters long. And they have features that indicate these specimens are adults. Oh, wow. But there are late juvenile Zalmoxis specimens that are six and a half feet or two meters long. And still growing. Mm-hmm. In 2017, Steve Brusati and others described a number of new Zalmoxis specimens. They've been found in multiple areas or localities of the Hot Seg Basin. And it turns out both species of Zalmoxis lived alongside each other. And more specimens have been found over the years, and Zalmoxis is now one of the most common dinosaurs found on Hotseg Island. So most of the skeleton's been found, and we know about 80% of the skull of Zalmoxis robustus. At least 22 Zalmoxis individuals have been found in just one locality, and it might be up to 25 individuals. Wow. that's quite a bone bed. Yeah. They didn't necessarily live together, though. They were found spread throughout this locality. Okay, so maybe not. It could be multiple bone beds. Yes. Zalmoxis shipororum was named based on an incomplete adult specimen and some referred fossils. Then later more fossils were assigned to shipororum. However, Brusati and others said that it was hard to refer fossils to either species because many fossils that were found were disarticulated and or isolated, so it's hard to tell where exactly they belonged. Also, 
though the two species have unique features, it's hard to compare them to close relatives because we don't have the same bones of those close relatives to compare them to. It's also unclear if some differences between the species are because of individual variation or ontogeny, how it's growing, and it's possible that there's even sexual dimorphism, which is something that Franz Nopsha had suggested. Brusati and others said that a comprehensive revision of Zalmoxis, quote, is becoming increasingly necessary. Hmm. <laughs> and apparently this study has begun. So for their paper, they accepted that there's two species of Zalmoxis and they referred some specimens to each species. And they described multiple individuals. Most of them were isolated bones. They described some teeth that were larger than the holotype of Zalmoxis, which they said, quote, illustrate that Zalmoxis, or at least Zalmoxis, Shipororum could reach a reasonably large size, although still much smaller than the rhabdodontid rhabdodon priscus from late Cretaceous faunas in Western Europe, end quote. So it might not be a, a small dwarf dinosaur, but it might still be small for a rhabdodontid. Yes. So not a dwarf dinosaur, but still on the smaller side. I guess that <laughs> kind of, <laughs> what's your definition of dwarf? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In 2022, last year, Felix Augustin and others found two partial brain cases previously thought to be Zelmoxis to actually be Telmatosaurus. So we've got some, some things are shifting when it comes to Zelmoxis. So to recap, there's two species, Zelmoxis robustus and Zelmoxis shiporum. The second species is spelled crazy. That S-H-Q-I-P-E-R-O-R-U-M. Yes, it's named for the Albanian name for Albania. Okay, that makes sense. Yep, and that was named in 2003. I would have never guessed that that was pronounced sheep to start. Yeah, I had to look that up. And hopefully, um, I feel like I'm probably not pronouncing it 100%, but hopefully it's close. I think you did a good job. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the effort. <laughs> <laughs> so we know it as Zomoxis now, but at first it was thought to be Maquadon robustum. It was described way back in 1899 by Franz Nopsha, and Nopsha referred Maquadon, an ornithopod named by H.D. Seeley that was found in Austria. He referred to part of the material as Maquadon suzai and part of it to Maquadon robustum. Then in 1915, he said that Maquadon may be the same as Rhabdodon and that the differences were from sexual dimorphism. He compared the fossils with other ornithopods from Europe and North America, like Camptosaurus, and found it to be similar to Rhabdodon, which was found in France. And then in 1990, George Olszewski corrected the name to Rhabdodon robustus. And then in 2003, Weishampel and others found enough differences to name Zelmoxis robustus. The genus name Zelmoxis refers to the Dacian deity Zelmoxis, who were treated in a crypt for three years to be resurrected on the fourth year, which is it was similar to how the fossils were liberated. Hmm. Zelmoxis was also a slave of Pythagoras, who traveled to Dacia and became a deity. And then the species name, of course, refers to its robust build, robustus. Although, again, ironic since the second species, Shiporum, is larger. Yeah. Zelmoxis is a super cool dinosaur name. Mm -hmm. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left. <laughs> 